goes there? Oh, it's you. Forgive me for straying from the camp. He hasn't been feeling too welcome, to say the least. I thought a change of scenery might do him good. But, alas. It's so quiet out here. The stars spread out before us, beckoning across time and space. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. How bitterly beautiful, those words. I should be stronger for all my experiences, yet my heart aches more than ever. I never understood why Grandfather gave his life that day. I thought that if I came here, I would find the answers I needed. But when I finally laid eyes on the land he sacrificed everything to save, saw firsthand the bickering, the pettiness. I was disappointed. I was angry. I could not fathom how these people were more deserving of his love than his family, than me. Nevertheless, I had to believe he had good reason. I was determined to uncover the whole truth of the calamity and, perhaps in so doing, find my own purpose in this sea of chaos. My travels have been enlightening, but I cannot say that I have enjoyed them. I have lost count of the many petty crises that I was helpless to resolve and of the people whose actions I could not understand. There were others, of course. Good people. People with whom I felt a kinship, whose lives I could not save. I found myself asking what it was all for. Why try if I was doomed to fail in the end? But then I recalled Grandfather's words to my father, years ago, before he left Charlayan behind forever. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. We must all protect that which we hold most dear in the manner of our own choosing. We have to try, do we not? Of course it's one thing to try and another to do. There were times while I was tracking the warriors of darkness when I faltered, when I was afraid. But then I thought of my brother, of Uri Angers. Oh, pray forgive me. This conversation has been rather one-sided, hasn't it? Mayhap you could recount some of your adventures in Ishgard. He is quite a man, the Lord Commander. I shall have to thank him for his kindness. Truth be told, I was rather taken aback by it all. Given Ishgard's famous love of foreigners, I was half expecting the Kyrugians to berate me for bleeding. But I never heard an unkind word. Everyone there seemed relatively open and friendly, in fact, thanks in no small part to your tireless efforts, I suspect. The hopes and dreams of so many rest on your shoulders, Warrior of Light. As long as the sun rises, we can but carry on. For the sake of those we hold dear. To what end dost thou cling to the tainted gifts of the mother? 
Every tool has its purpose. Even this. Well, what is it? The seeds sown in Vilbrand have been plucked from the earth and left to wither. Alas, Titan's demise sufficed not to drive the kobolds to deepest desperation. What did the man in white have to say? That we are to proceed as he did first set forth. Well, that's easy for him to say! It's not his bloody world on the brink of destruction, is it? Be thou well reminded that with an end to Ishgard's unrest, naught now remaineth to preoccupy the Scion's thoughts. And thus may they devote their every energy to thwarting thee and thine. I foresee only greater difficulties ahead. Foresee? Are you sure you don't welcome them? I'm starting to think you might hold a candle for your old friends after all. Pray do not mistake mine intent. I but look upon the path which lieth before us with due trepidation. Shouldst thou be of like mind, pray consider then another course. For the power to invoke the ardour belongeth not unto the Assians alone. With thine own hand strike down thine enemy, the so-called hero who would see thy home lost to light. Do but this, and thou wouldst at a single stroke disrupt the all too delicate balance of this realm, plunging her straightways into chaos. You do realize what you're suggesting, yes? To ignore the plight of those one... Very well. Draw him out. We'll make it quick. It shall be done. What good a creed one cannot uphold. What hurts soothed. What lives saved? Oh, hapless fool, what hast thou wrought by thine own hands? Minfilia, my friends, I shall not now beg your forgiveness. Full deeply, though it paineth me to walk it, I shall not stray from my chosen path. As Moonbreeder remains steadfast, so too shall I.
Brothers and sisters, 20 years ago, Alamigo, our home, was claimed by the Galian Empire. In our haste to overthrow the King of Ruin, we turned a blind eye to our foes in the north. With our glorious revolution, we but laid a path for a new tyrant to succeed the old. And when confronted with our failure, we fled. Not a day goes by that I do not think of those we left behind. Think of them and feel ashamed. And I know each and every one of you feels the same. We abandoned them, our own flesh and blood, to labor till their backs gave in and their breath gave out, building the twisted steel ramparts which now mar our once majestic mountains. We abandoned them, the brave and true, to fight and die for their country, or worse, to be conscripted and sent off to rob another poor bastard of his home. We abandon them, the meek and powerless, to bow and scrape when the Galleons pass, to sully themselves that they might live to see another day of misery. The Black Wolf may be dead, but a new Imperial Viceroy reigns in Alamigo now. A beast, not a fraction as merciful. You all know the Aeorzean Alliance will do naught to oppose him. For all their promises and platitudes, they will not act if there's no profit in it. Only we can free our brothers and sisters from the Empire's tyranny, my friends. Only we have the courage to stand and fight. They have imprisoned us. They have enslaved us, and they have murdered us, but no more. Blood demands blood, and the Garleans shall pay for every drop they have spilt upon our lands. This I promise you, for we have a power within us, my friends. A power befitting our pride, our righteousness. Only join us, and we shall grant you the means to unleash it, and together we shall see the Alamegan standard raised over the mountains of Gia Arbania once more. Power befitting their pride. Not at all ominous, that. Wait, is that... What are you two doing here? I could ask you the same thing. Well, well, this is quite the surprise. If you see what I see, if you feel as I feel... Might I suggest we continue this conversation in more agreeable surroundings? For it is not strength of arms that will win this battle, but strength of heart.
My thanks, comrades. You must be the esteemed adventurers of whom I've heard so much. I understand you have taken an interest in our cause. A great interest, you might say. Your words have certainly made quite an impression on my friend and I. The Resistance has long, and some would say wisely, avoided... I can only assume you have good reason to be so bold. What? Because that would do much to explain the sizable shipment of crystals you recently received from your smuggler friends, whom I Ishgard... I'd like to hear more about the Griffin. The real Griffin. Your performance earlier didn't fool us. Ah. The famous scions of the Seventh Dawn. I should have known better than to think I could conceal the truth from you lot. You are right. I am not the Griffin, but I speak with his voice, and it was at his BS that we procured those crystals. You are wrong, however, if you think that we procured them to summon a primal. We used them to reach an accord with the Amalja. In exchange for crystals to summon their god, they will aid us in the fight for Alamegan liberation. You've got to be joking! Have you gone completely mad? When people find out you helped the Lizardmen summon Ifrit, they'll turn on the Resistance. Alamigo will never be free! This isn't a fairy tale, girl. We don't have the luxury to play at being honourable heroes. It's because the likes of you wouldn't sully your saintly hands that Alamigo's been under the yoke for the past 20 years. But the Griffin won't stand for it, and neither will we. We're ready to do whatever it takes. What proof do you have of this arrangement with the Amalja? What? Aside from a lack of crystals? None. But the beastmen have a great big pile of the things if you fancy looking. You might want to hurry, though. It'll not be long before they summon their god. Search our camp if you don't believe me. We have naught to hide. If there is a cache to be found, Ida and I will find it. Then let us be off. Are you perchance the Warrior of Light? Aye. I thought so. You should know that a great many who have joined us did so because you saved them. Because you showed them that one brave man can make a difference. You saved me too once. Helped a friend over in Quarry Mill make some medicine I needed. But that was a lifetime ago. On behalf of my brothers and sisters, I thank you. You gave us hope where there was none, courage and strength when all was lost. We shall not squander your gift. I know that look, Ida, and I do not like it. You cannot seriously be contemplating taking up arms with that band of cutthroats. I... I just... If the 
whatever Ivan and his men have their way, it is only a matter of time before the situation in Alamigo comes to a head. Your homeland's future teeters on a knife edge, and any reckless action, however small, could have irrevocable consequences. You mustn't lose sight of that, Ida. When the time comes, we must all make our choices, but we must do so in full possession of the facts. Now, let us away. There is work to be done. This isn't right. The Amalja would never leave this place so poorly guarded. Not willingly, no. Saviors of Eorzea. Slow as ever. By the Twelve, will you never learn? You know, you're right. Mayhap it is time for a change of tack. It's all a bit much, isn't it? And frankly, we don't have the leisure to do it. But killing the Warrior of Light on the other hand. 
that would soon plunge Eorzea into chaos. One life for one world. A fair exchange! Wouldn't you agree? Lest you forget, you've more than one opponent. Since you will offer more than mere target practice, unlike your sister. Alize! Did... Did I not tell you, Alphano? I am not the girl I once was. My brother was always the clever one, while my talents lay elsewhere. to stand against us, to destroy all that we hold dear, then you shall die by my sword! Let's finish this.
ends now. What? The chains. God, you snake. You would betray us as well? He that holdeth fast unto his convictions shall never count betrayal amongst his crimes, though all the world may call him villain. My path is unchanged, my creed sacrosanct. This I believe with all my heart. But say, warrior of darkness, and speak true, what dost thou believe? that rendering up the souls of thy world in service to the rejoining will grant it salvation? Nay. By the Twelve! Oriange! Mine apologies, Master Alfino, that the brightest light might shine Duty did compel me to walk in darkest shade. You sweet fool. I was almost willing to believe you had turned against us. I expect a full explanation when this is over. For now, may I assume you have turned your cloak for the last time? Thou mayest, my lady. By thy leave. Even odds, then. No matter. We'll crush the lot of you in one fell swoop! Understood. Hearken to me. We only have one chance. Channel your ether into my blade that I might strike before the mage casts his spell. I cannot do it alone, but together, together we can defeat them.
れたんだ Alize, are you hurt? A touch dizzy, but otherwise fine. Thank you. And there you have it. Our friend is too stubborn to die. <sighs> we are far from finished. Have you never considered how we came to this world? Crystals? You mean... like the Asians? Just so. As the Asians flee under the rift twixt plains with crystals of darkness, so did these warriors come hither with crystals of light. Eloquent, as always. Aye, like the Asians, we too are beyond death. You cannot defeat that which is eternal. Wait! Such methods as the Asians employ require the renunciation of the flesh. You... you would have had to... At long last, you see. To save our world, we gave our lives. We were just adventurers trying to make our way. And our job here, a favor there, we never aspired to be warriors of light. But word of our deeds spread, and soon people were calling us heroes. They placed their hopes and dreams on our shoulders, and bid us fight for all that was good and right. We fought, and we fought, and we fought until there was no one left to fight. We won! And now our world is being erased from existence.
We did everything right. Everything that was asked of us and still, still it came to this. You of all people should understand. We cannot, we will not falter. We brought our world to the brink of destruction and now we must save it. I've died before, Arbut. I'm not afraid to die again. No matter how many times we fall, we must rise and carry on the fight for those we left behind. Known the depths of sorrow and embrace the highest sacrifice. Nonetheless, Master Louis Soi, guide my hand, I pray you, as fate's thread spinneth upon this most capricious spindle. Quickly! Thou must needs invoke the power of thy crystal! What is this place? Such pain. Such sorrow. Oh, my dear children. It can't be. Mother Heidelin, hearken unto your children's plea. From two worlds do we gather, and from two worlds do we offer a bounty of light. In this desperate hour we do beseech your intercession. We beg an audience with the word of the mother, with your chosen Minfilia. Your cries go not unheard nor your sacrifices unnoticed. Though many are lost, there are those we can yet save, who I can yet save. Minfilia. Blessed children of the first, the light of your world hath grown blinding in its radiance, but it is not yet absolute. I will hie me to your world and there take unto myself the light which riseth even now to drown it, as darkness once did drown another. 
Now you deign to answer our prayers? I will suffer this farce no longer! As the Asians must serve as instruments of Zodiac's will, so too must others carry out the will of Hydaelyn. But for the boon you have granted her, she has grown strong enough to set me free, that I might serve as her emissary. Your suffering, your sacrifice, your supplications, she has heard all. We will not let the first fall to light. Thank you, Uriange, for bringing everyone here. It fills my heart with joy to look upon the faces of my friends once more. In taking you unto her bosom, I knew that Heidelin had bequeathed to you a sliver of her grace, granting you strength long sought. And in treating with the Asians, I learnt of a star like unto our own, a doomed world of fallen heroes in whom I glimpsed ourselves, the first. Full long did I search for a means to save this world, concluding at the last that the answer lay in the power of blessed crystals. And thus did I labour to set light against dark. Yet I knew from the beginning that this salvation would not come without sacrifice. For the instrument of the first's deliverance would of necessity be required to journey thither, there to remain, mayhap forever. You orchestrated all of this not to save her, but to send her away? One life for one world. Such was the bargain, and you the coin, though it were not mine to spend. Have we not walked together in the light of the crystal, and at her bidding borne witness to the joys and sorrows of this land? Each and every one of you knows my heart. If this be the price I must pay, I pay it gladly. You would go alone then? My dearest Thancred, you who have ever watched over me, I am truly grateful for all you have done on my behalf, as would my father be. Your kindness, your compassion, your love. These are your gifts to me, and our gifts to them. Forming a bond which transcends time and space. Sometimes I forget you are not the child I once knew. Make me proud. Long have I watched you from Hydaelyn's side, watched as you nurtured and kept safe the light of the dawn. The dark recesses of the world hide untold secrets and dangers. Thus do I entrust to you, Tupsimati. I pray you, keep to the path that you may never have need of it.
would seem the power of our crystals is all but spent. Perhaps, if there is naught else to be done, Hear me, servants of Hydaelyn. If you would have us place our trust in you, then I would ask a favor. Take us with you. Take us home. We were blind to the truth once, so I tell you this, as one fool to another. Light, dark, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you choose to use them. We made our choice and you see what came of it, so please, forge a different path. Seize a better fate. Strange feeling. So many times have I watched you depart, my heart filled with worry. And ever did you return to me in triumph. Someday, when I have found a way to free this star from her sorrow, I promise you I shall repay the favor.
Back in the solar. It's been too long since we were all together like this. Not since. Not since after Moon Breda. Much has changed since then. We ourselves, most of all. Though not all who were lost could be gathered here today, we may take comfort in the knowledge that those who are not are carrying on the fight. While I am grateful to our friends in the North for their hospitality, it is an off good to be back. But, as Papalima rightly said, much has changed since we last stood here. The Scions of the Seventh Dawn are not as they once were, nor should we be. Our travels in the North brought us into contact with a host of fine and generous people, and their selfless deeds serve to show me that it is not lofty causes that should inform our actions, but our hearts. And I hope that the Scions might continue in this manner, as individuals driven by individual principles. Provided we all sincerely desire to work towards Eorzea's salvation, I believe the paths we follow to achieve it need not, and should not, be dictated by any single ideal. Companions bound by a common purpose, free to go whither they will. The idea is not without merit. Very well. I shall resume my research of the primals and the elder gods of Eorzea. Should anyone have need of my findings, you need only ask. I should be glad of your continued assistance. Well, my main purpose in coming here was to see the signs of the Seventh Dawn restored and my dear friend found. Nevertheless, having involved myself in your struggles, I feel compelled to see them through to the bitter end. For Minfilia's sake. That is, if there are no objections. You will always be welcome here, Kryle. Uriangere, can we trust you to carry on your investigation of the Assians as before? Regardless of mine own desires, I am undeserving of your trust having so villainously deceived you all. Now, now, I'll hear no more of that. It would be disrespectful of Minfilia's wishes. She entrusted matters here to us, that we might protect this star and understand the truth which hides at her heart. Mayhap I can handle the former, but I think you far better suited to the latter. No? Very well. Then out of love for my Lady Minfilia and Moonbreeder both, this shall be my solemn charge. I... Papalimo and I should probably return to Thandalan to keep an eye on the Resistance. There's still the matter of the Griffin and the Amalja, not to mention the new Imperial Viceroy. That little lot must be worthy of our attention, right? And what will you do, Alize? You know I have no great love for organizations and formalities. That being said, this new approach you propose is not wholly objectionable. And we've always got him to keep us from bickering. But I will suffer no titles. I am not here for House Leveilleux, nor to walk in Grandfather's shadow. Upon that point, we see eye to eye. If it please you, you may think of me as but another comrade in arms.
Well then, Alfie, I for my part shall see to the paperwork and the finances with my characteristic aplomb. I would not have it any other way, Tataru. And we mustn't forget you. What now for the warrior of light? Indeed. The path behind us was fraught with hardship, and the path before us will be no less unforgiving. But a new dawn shall break over the realm, and I see before me the faces of those who will deliver it. One world's heroes are another world's villains. One world's loss, another world's gain. Where men go as one, there is life. And where there is life, My friends, if I may, I would ask that you entrust Tupsimati to me. Clouds gather upon the horizon, and as Master Louisois' disciple, I would keep it close at hand. Thank you. I shall guard it well. There is cause to hope. For every ending, every parting, marks a new beginning.